Uh, so the MEK inhibitors are actually a class of compounds that have been tested for 13 years now. They got into the clinic in 2000, and the reason for studying them was that at least at that time, as best as we knew, this was a protein that wasn't mutated or amplified, which means it's a protein that is present in cancer cells in the same way as in normal cells, but the difference was that a lot of cancer cells have high expression of MET, and the feeling was that a number of proteins that drive tumors signal through MEC. So if you were to block MEC, uh, you might be able to affect a lot of different tumors. What we sort of call the third generation compounds that uh, were tested, I guess it's been about five, six years now, are the ones that seem to have the ideal properties. They are potent enough and not so potent that you have a lot of side effects. And uh, the first one that got approved was actually approved for melanoma as a single agent. And uh, as we all know, uh, RAF inhibitors are active in melanoma, and if you look at the signal pathway in the cell, MEC is downstream of RAF. And so the idea is that if a RAF inhibitor will work, a MEC inhibitor might work as well. And uh, the first compound to uh, be approved as a, is actually quite active in melanoma. You know, for the practicing physician, the two ways of looking at it. One would be, okay, we have a BRAF inhibitor is very active, so why do we need another compound? You know, to which I'll say, you know, in other parts of medicine like hypertension and infectious disease, you have multiple hypertensive agents, you have multiple antibiotics, so anytime you have more than one compound, it's actually a benefit for the practitioner because we know different patients have different tolerance for different drugs. So you might have a patient who might not be able to tolerate a BRAF inhibitor for whom a MEC inhibitor will be ideal. So that's uh, one reason. The second reason is that uh, the MEC inhibitors uh, can be handled slightly differently from a RAF inhibitor. So uh, their effects are not completely duplicative, which is to say you might have a patient who might not respond to a RAF inhibitor, who might respond to a MEC inhibitor. A part of the reason might be the side effect profile might be different. So on the RAF inhibitor, they may not want to take their medication on the MEC inhibitor, they would. Uh, the one side effect that can be worrisome for uh, patients as well as for physicians is actually squamous cell skin cancers that the RAF inhibitors can cause, the MEC inhibitors don't cause these things. One of the uh, side effects of the MEC inhibitors that uh, had been very concerning that actually uh, caused some delay in their development is uh, eye toxicity, ocular toxicity. So some of the patients um, have blurred vision and, and actually uh, one of the early MEC inhibitors uh, uh, caused retinal vein thrombosis in a patient and that actually stopped the field for a while. But as we've tested these compounds, what we found was that the uh, eye toxicity is due to what we call central serous retinopathy. And so actually uh, between the retina and the back of the eye, you have a collection of fluid there. And so that causes the blood vision. But what we've come to uh, learn is that typically when you stop the drug, uh, this results and then you can reduce the dose and patients tolerate it very well. So that's probably uh, the most concerning side effect because you know you give the pill to a patient and they come back and their vision is blurred is concerning but what we now know is that these are not permanent and uh, we haven't seen any patient who uh, had anything like cortical blindness or even partial blindness you stop the drug and it goes away so i think it's exciting that 
uh, for melanoma now we have two oral drugs that uh, we can use in different situations but I think at this time the most exciting thing about the MEK inhibitors is the idea that when you combine the MEK inhibitor of the RAF inhibitor uh, the effects are multiplicative so they work much better than either drug alone and I think in the era of drug combinations for targeted agents, this is the first combination where two drugs are actually less toxic than one, which was surprising because when the studies were being done, the biggest fear was that, for instance, both drugs can cause skin rash, both drugs can cause uh, uh, fatigue, and so the feeling is if you take two drugs that both can cause rash, you have a lot of skin rash. And actually what was found was that the uh, squamous cell skin cancers that the RAF inhibitors cause, the incidence is much, much lower when you combine the two drugs.